So you could grab a texture from Polyhaven or you could do it in Substance Painter. Uh, a Substance Painter is going to give you more flexibility and enable you to choose from a whole bunch of different presets uh, and also adapt and change it a little bit more intuitively in Substance Painter. So here I am, I'm importing my rock model into Substance Painter. If you're using Blender, it's important to change the uh, normal format to OpenGL. Once you've got an object in Substance Painter, you should bake the texture maps, bake the mesh maps. So go to uh, that section just there, and you don't need normal or ID, and you can just say bake selected textures. That will prep the model for things like smart materials and smart masks and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you click this button here, that one there, go into the Substance community, it will open up a browser and take you to the Substance community assets, which is a whole bunch of free uh, assets for Substance Painter and all other Adobe sort of products. You'll need to create a login for that, but it's free. And then you can search for a texture you like. Now, I really like the look of this. Uh, I think it's lichen covered stone. So I'm going to download that smart material. Sometimes smart materials can be fairly hefty in size. Uh, so once that's downloaded, I can go to import resources, go add resources and browse to where that smart material downloaded to. It should normally recognize that it's a smart material. And then you can choose to either put it in your current session, your project, or just always be in uh, Substance Painter. And it will also automatically uh, highlight it. Now you can just drag and drop it either onto the model or into the layer stack. And you get this really, really nice uh, result straight out of, the, out of the bag, so to speak. Lichen covered stone. But of course, because it's Substance Painter, you've got access to all the different layers and you can go in there and you can tweak them and you can add to them so I can decide I want more lichen or moss over my uh, my sort of stone feature or less and I could add extra stuff to it as well. I'm just going to pretty much leave this uh, as it is straight out of the bag or the box so to speak. Yeah. Once I'm happy, export textures. Now hopefully you remember how to do this from <laughs> a couple of years ago or yeah. Uh, First of all, decide where you want to save it. And then you should have created a Blender template. You only need, for something like this stone, you only need base color, roughness, and normal. And then you can decide what size you want. Uh, the default size of my project, 2048, is enough. And then export. Uh, it should export fairly quick. Now back in Blender, now I've got Node Wrangler plugin, another one that comes with uh, Blender. I've got that enabled. Again, enable that via preferences, plugins, preferences add on, sorry. And then with Control Shift T on the material, it'll automatically bring up a browser that will let you select those textures and set up the principled uh, material when you won't have to connect anything. It'll just do it. It'll be exactly like it is in, um, in Substance. So once I've got that, now I can I can start messing around. So I can start duplicating this pre-decimated mesh using Shift D, uh, or you could even use Alt D. Alt D might be even better for this. Shift D will make a copy or duplicate. Alt D will make an instance, uh, meaning if you changed one of these, then all of the copies would change as well. Uh, not that I am going to do that, but another thing that an instance has over a duplicate is that an instance is less memory intensive. So uh, it will it won't bog down Blender as much. I can add more and more and more of these rock features. I can start creating almost kit bashing rock features. Oh my god, look at that. It's uh, it's some kind of cool henge like stone. 